Today we're doing a very quick flat slab analysis in Kiwi 3D with Grasshopper and Rhino. You can see that you can have any column layout you want, irregular or regular. You've got a flat uh, UDL or you can have point loads, line loads, etc. Different thicknesses of slab and it's going to allow you to have a look at an indicative deformed model although it won't be 100% accurate and you'll be able to get an indication of moments displacements etc and obviously you can vary anything you want, thicknesses or move a column and then rerun the analysis pretty easily and a reminder you can get more tutorials like this at our website and you can also download some of the scripts in this area here and we've got some demo scripts you can test out as well and feel free to have a look at some of our other services we've got model conversion rapid framing from architectural models engineering visualization reinforcement and a lot more Okay, as usual, I've got Rhino here with Grasshopper on the right. I'm going to start off just by drawing in some columns. And I've got some points I've drafted before. Just to make it easy, I'm just going to copy this column to the different points of the slab that I want. And then I'm just going to with a polyline I'm just going to create a slab outline okay so in grasshopper I'm going to set my slab outline and With points, I'm going to just grab all the, just drag and select and set those points there. Then I'm just going to start building my model. So as before in my previous video, if you've seen it, we need the basis is an analysis model, which we're going to solve with Kiwi 3D. And that needs a few inputs. I'm just going to do linear analysis to start off with and I need some elements and instead of using a beam I'm going to use a shell this time so what does it need? It needs a brep so I've got a curve and I'm just going to make that into a brep so to do that I'm just going to double click and I want boundary surface so that's created a slab surface and that is a brep put that into shell and I need a material I'm going to use this and the T you can see uses a value list component so to get that you just go into the params the very first tab and there's value list there that's going to give you options for a slab I'm going to have it as concrete put that into material it's already got a thickness it needs a refinement and that's to do with the fact that it's a shell so or what type of uh, analysis you're after so as it's a surface, I'm going to use the surface refinement 
and that's created my shell. Then I need some supports. And that is in supports here. These are going to be point supports. It's defaulted to everything's locked, but it will rotate around that um, unless you. It'll rotate around the node unless you make that true, which is what we want at the moment. Uh, that goes into supports. Let's pick that up. It's called that number one. Now I'm just going to maximize the 3D. Whoops, I've got it upside down. So I'm going to move that up. with move there we go, that's better the columns are just visual really It's um, as far as Kiwi is concerned it's being supported at those points you can see there so I've just had to save that in a folder and it's solved it already now we haven't put a load in there so I'll do that now and I only use the surface load and to do that it needs a brep exactly the same as the shell it needs a brep now obviously you can do whatever brep you want but the easiest possible way is just to use the whole of the slab as a load a uniform load So value wise, I'm just going to leave it at 10. Put that into load. It's giving you a visual there. It's a uniform load over that whole slab. Solve it again. Now to get the results, obviously, instead of the 1D that we used before, we've got a 2D result component. And we need a value list again, so a value list there. And that's telling me the displacement. Now it looks a bit funny on the screen uh, because it's got a few overlapping elements there. So I'm going to turn off this boundary and the model too. So there we go. And X, we don't want X, we want Z. It's up and down the up and down the vertical. And you can see it's sinking a little bit there. Where it's got a bit less support and it's also an end span. Now you've got to remember that this displacement is not real. <laughs> As uh, any structural engineer will tell you, there's no way that this program can tell uh, the simplicity of this analysis will tell you a real displacement and I'll put the um, deform model component in there just to show you what it looks like if I turn that if I unpreview that and that's a scale of one so if I just make a panel scale it up a little bit That's sort of the deform shape you would expect. Let's just turn it up a little bit more, say 30. It's sinking where it's got an unsupported span at the end, which makes sense, and the corners are turning up, which you'd expect. So that looks correct in terms of a finite element analysis to me. But yeah, as I, as I said before, this is not real. Concrete's pretty complicated. Um, in fact, there's probably not any model in the world that can accurately tell the deflection of a concrete slab, even today. <coughs> you can get a lot more accurate with um, crack sections and uh, working out exactly how much reinforcement's in there and all that sort of stuff. But this is just a visual representation. I wouldn't take 
any more than that out of it. And of course you can, the useful part is you can get your moments. So if I just turn this deflected model off for a second, and I'll turn this back on, you can see the moments are in one direction and the moments in the other direction. And to get the actual values, we can use this legend. So if I go back, it's under display in Grasshopper, there's a legend here, legend, and it needs a C and a T. <clears throat> so that will give you the values in kilonewton meters or whatever units you're using. So it's going from minus 20 to 13 and a half in one direction and 31 to 13 in the other direction. Now the other thing you can do is you can, a little trick is you can, instead of using that model, which is the flat model, you can use the deform model, which is this G. Oh, sorry, the M there. So you can actually see the moment in the deformed shape. Which is pretty cool. And the last little thing you might want to do is you can say you want to see the actual thickness of the slab. You can extrude this um, deformed shape in a direction. So I'm going to have it in the Z direction. And <clears throat> I want to deform it. I want to extrude it in the same amount of, as the thickness. So if I just copy this, we had 0.1 or 100 mil. Put that in there. That shouldn't make any difference. Then I use that as my Z vector. Extrude that down, oh, and I've got to make it negative. So a way, quick way to do that is just put an expression in there and say minus x. So it's minus whatever it comes in, and you can see it's given me what looks like a thickness of the slab there. And of course, if you don't want the plot on there, you've got a thickened. Deformed shape. And that's the very basics. Now, just to take it one step further, say I wanted a thickened part of the slab. So, what I'd do is I'd take this back. Just eye it in. <laughs> then I'm going to draw another polyline. It's very rough, obviously. Okay, that looks fine. So let's just check what our boundary Our boundary is now this, but I haven't recomp uh, recomputed it as yet and it's actually telling me a warning that some of the support support points aren't on the um, model anymore which is correct so what I want to do is I want to grab these three components and I'm going to set whoops not multiple curves I just want to set this curve here as my other shell so I've got that one and that one. But the difference being, I'm going to make this 300 mil thick, or 0.3 meters. Now all I need to do is put that into the component, run it again, and you can already see but it's almost turned that section into a one-way slab because that is barely deforming because it's so thick. And to see what it looks like, 
I've got two breps there, so if I have two thicknesses in the Z component, you can see that's what the shape will look like. And I'll just turn off these flat surfaces. You can see the thicker part has deflected far, far less along that between these two support points but it's probably making the deflection this way a lot worse. So that proves, I mean, that makes sense. Just shows you that the analysis seems to be knowing what it's doing. And again, you can get the, I'll just turn that off for a second. You can get the Z, the uh, moments in both directions and any other properties you want that are available from that from this uh, component there so that's just a little bit extra there so that's just a little bit extra but I mean there's a lot more that you would need to do for example, you'd need to put self-weight in here, um, which I'd do by setting up the different zones for different loads. You could have different thicknesses in the slab like this to stiffen up edges. You could put line loads on there. And of course, this is a good way of getting column loads out because you could have a very irregular grid there and it's going to it's going to give you a pretty accurate um, amount of load from each of these columns based on finite element analysis which is a lot better than just tributary area thanks for watching this structured parametrics video Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.